Welcome to Foundation Focus. Hello, I'm Tom Jones, the president of the Education Foundation. And as this program airs, the, the foundation is busy with our two largest programs um, of, of the year. And the first are teacher grants. This is our largest program and one of our oldest program. And we will be awarding this year over $150,000, which is a record in the history of the foundation. And the grants go to the schools, the district, and the teachers, and it helps innovate learning um, in our classrooms. The second program that we're involved in this year is our annual dinner, which is a very exciting gala, which takes place on Saturday, November the 5th. And our special guest today is involved in both of these programs. And so please welcome Ali Elna Oosh, okay, who is the executive director of the St. Lucie Cultural Alliance. Thank you so much for coming in, Aliana. Tom, thank you so much for having me. Uh, well, first of all, let's just start off. Tell the audience about yourself mm -hmm. and your journey here and how you founded the St. Lucie Cultural Alliance. And then I'd like to take a deeper dive into both the, uh, the grant program. And there's a great story there about how you and I met mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and, and, and what you're doing with the school district in terms of bringing science and art together. But first of all, just tell the audience about your, yourself. All right. So um, I got my start in arts management uh, right out of college. My mother was a professional actress in the former Soviet Union, and she had a brilliant idea to start a theater company based in the Russian theatrical tradition in um, Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. And she looked at her only offspring and said, honey, why don't you run this thing? And of course, I had no idea what a nonprofit world was all about or how to start a nonprofit organization or anything about running an arts organization. But I fell in love with that instantly. It was such an amazing journey, creating something from scratch and providing an educational, entertainment, and creative outlet for adults and children, because our theater was based for, for young audiences as well. Um, and the theater is still doing extremely well. It's uh, in Arlington right now. We have ended up merging with another theater company, but it was an amazing journey. Uh, we ended up getting a major grant from the U.S. Department of Education. So our educational programs were praised on the U.S. House of Representatives on the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives. Very, I didn't um, know that. It's very yep, interesting. Yep, so we got $600,000. And the beauty of that is we tricked kids into learning. So we had a program based on uh, social studies. And we developed a play, and kids would memorize lines, and everybody would hear everybody else say their lines. So they ended up doing extremely well on all of their SOL tests. So you were always really linking in the academic side in art. Yeah. And that's the thing passion. that when I first met you, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, mm -hmm. but when I first met you, it was like, oh, this is more than art. This is art and academics, and that's what we're all about. So it was a nice fit, but sorry. Absolutely. Because kids learn differently. Yes. And sometimes, you know, kids really benefit so much from infusion of arts and, and creative activities. So it was, you know, a no-brainer when, when you and I spoke. Um, so after uh, D.C., I ended up going to New Orleans, and I ran the New Orleans Opera Association. Mm -hmm. And then I saw a little ad in, in um, about it program administrator for Delray Beach, and I'm like, program administrator, please, what is this yeah, all about? What is that, right? Exactly, <laughs> but I never heard of Delray, and then I love Florida, and I love the sun, so I just came out for an interview to check it out. Um, had no interest in, in getting the job. It ended up being a lot more. <laughs> um, so we, I found an arts garage in Delray Beach, then we ended up expanding to Pompano Beach. I was running the Pompano Beach Amphitheater. We opened their cultural center, uh, Bailey Contemporary Arts was another center that we opened. So we had a lot of fun in South Florida, both in Delray and Pompano. Um, I went back to Maryland for a couple of years, and then when I came back, because after the first winter going back to Maryland, mm -hmm. I was convinced there was not going to be a second. <laughs> Florida <laughs> spoils you completely, right. so I knew I was going to come back. And I got back and, um, in 2019, and okay. then pandemic struck, and I'm looking for the job in the arts, and I'm thinking, oh my god, that's it, my life is over. <laughs> But the funny thing is, in, when I was in Arlington, um, we, there was an Arlington Cultural Affairs office, and they had an, an amazing incubation program, which really enabled my theater company to get started. Okay. So I always wanted to run a countywide organization for the arts. So I'm in Maryland, I'm back here in the middle of pandemic. I'm right. thinking there's no possibility, and then all of a sudden I see my dream job appear in front of me. 
hand of God. <laughs> that's yeah, the yeah. only way. Isn't that terrific? So that's how I ended up here. And I love, it's everything I always love to do. It's starting something, building something from scratch. Right, so you actually created the Cultural Alliance no, no, right? no, the, for the uh, county? No, 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 no. The Cultural Alliance has been around in various forms and shapes since the 80s. Oh, okay. All it right. was part of the county at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, then when the academy went belly up, they dismissed, dismantled the department completely. Then they had a couple other starts that didn't quite glue. And then when Howard Tipton came, right. He was the visionary, and he said, we've got to have the arts and culture in here. This is ridiculous. So he brought Brevard County leadership to help us build the infrastructure while they were looking for the executive director. So okay. the timing was impeccable. Well, that, that's great. So then you actually created a relationship with the school district, which I wasn't even really uh, fully aware of. So you started to talk to the folks in, in the... Uh, in the science area, right? We Well, the, the idea of us wanting to do the program in schools, it was way before me. Uh, but when the, the whole idea of Recycle Project came about very interestingly, if I can share that story with oh, you. Sure. So when I first started, got here, I was talking to our commissioner, Linda Bartz, and she has this amazing statue in her office made entirely of recycle cans. Right. Lucy, it's beautiful. So she and I started talking about the importance of recycling mm -hmm. and the importance of education. And then one thing led to another, and we, we decided that we have to combine the two. Right. So that's what the idea was actually born, is because of Lucy. And that's called ACE, right? That's the uh, Arts um, Conserve the Environment yes, program. Yes, yes. And th right. that's a much bigger scope. So right. the vision behind ACE is that we want to make sure that this county is known for being revolutionary in recycling and conservation. And um, the best way we believe to do so is through the arts. So one is component is education, and that's what you and I are doing together, and I think it's a beautiful partnership. And then we also work with the Inner Truth Project, where we work with the sexual abuse survivors, and we partner them with our artists, and they create a beautiful piece of art out of using recycled materials to tell their story of survival, that they're not dispensable, the whole concept of from, bath, from trash to beauty. Mm -hmm. So that's, okay. one, that's another component of this program. Right. Um, we also want to have sculpture gardens made at recycled materials throughout the county. Okay. Um, but the education component is humongous. Well, that's great because that fits in well with the, what the foundation does. The foundation a few years ago stepped back and said, you know, what's our space in the uh, county? And we said as a direct support organization of the uh, school district, it really is to help innovate um, learning. Yep. And really, and, and ultimately, that uh, provides the, the, the knowledge for every student to graduate work ready or career focused. Right. So when you and I first met, I said, art is always important, but <laughs> I wasn't really sure of all the, all the things you had done. Then I realized you already had created this program and the, the relationships w with, w um, with the school district. Let's talk a little bit about some of the programs, maybe one or two programs that you're currently working on mm -hmm. through, through the, the school district that this grant will, um, will help. Yep. So one of the things that we've done already is the professional development for our teachers. Right. That, that launched uh, last, last month. Yep, right. exactly. And it was extremely successful. The teachers loved getting the hands-on experience and learning new techniques. We had a, an amazing drum circle that we had an incredible attendance to as well. And what we're working on right now is uh, collaborating with, with individual with schools, schools right? and also with Eco, um, Oxbow Eco Center. Okay. So they're our science component and we bring the arts. That's how the two merge, and we merge them into our classrooms. So you're bringing experts into the school district, okay, in the art programs. Exactly. Uh, give us uh, the audience an um, example of one of the projects. So you're going to take a recycling material and create art, art, uh, and create art. Exactly, and we are encouraging our teachers to actually, even our teachers as well, is to incorporate curriculum into their projects. But the idea is that we also want to create a database of various lesson plans that okay. teach curriculum through recycling and by utilizing recycling materials as well. Um, and then once the, we're also going to be providing uh, reimbursement for our teachers okay. for their supplies as well. So sure, we help right. out in that sense. So there's funding for that. Exactly, right? exactly. Absolutely. And then we're going to exhibit all of the art pieces in April at our Arts, Mind, and Soul Festival that we're going to be holding in tradition. Okay, so we have to mark mark, mark that, that date yep. down. It's Absolutely. Be fantastic now, event. do the students actually go on field trips? Do they go out into the, into the, into the uh, um, lagoon? and actually look for um, debris and collect it? Is that part of the program? Uh, we're hoping to get to that point at some point, but not yet. Okay. Um, right now, what we're encouraging our teachers to also do is to create recycling bins. So the right. idea is to really come full circle. You create recycling bin from recycled materials, you collect the materials in there, then you create a project from the materials you collected, 
and then eventually you actually recycle the project itself. Right, yeah, the school district has a, re, a recycling program we talked about, it, yeah. so this will just further that, uh, that, that, that program. And it's Factory, all about... I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, we're actually working with the high school, right? The high school has a, a bunch of uh, garbage bins, okay, that needed to be... Uh, um, uh, to be uh, purchased again because they they they, uh, they had uh, passed their useful life. So you and I talked about it, and we said, "Hey, rather than just do a regular garbage bin, let's do a recycling bin." So yep. we're working with um, with that school right now yeah. as part of this grant. Exactly, and we would love to have the kids actually create a beautiful artwork that encourages others to recycle, and then we'll wrap the trash cans with that as well. Right. I really love the uh, concept of bringing in the. Um, the academic side and the art side because that's left right left brain right right brain and and that's where all of that creativity takes place and all that learning takes place you know with that with that art and building imagination is so critical getting right. kids to you know step outside the box and just get really creative and passionate excited about what they're doing yeah yeah so that, so folks, that was the first great pro linkage, you know, uh, uh, with our grant program. And our grant program, of course, has been going on for many, many years. And this is really uh, a um, unique approach. So it's, just, it's a great partnership. And it didn't end there, okay? So what happened was you and I were <laughs> chatting, and uh, we were getting ready to uh, uh, start the work on our annual gala. And the annual gala now, we're on our 23rd year. Congratulations. Yeah, uh, thank you. And it started out as, and it still is, it's a, uh, it was a, um, uh, actually a formal, okay? It mm -hmm. was uh, tuxedos and gowns, and that was up until the COVID hit. And then, of course, like everyone else, we went virtual. But now we're coming back to our regular event. And we decided rather than have the, the, um, the, the, uh, the gala in terms of uh, formal wear, that we would go casual but would still be elegant. So the theme is an evening for education, and it's an elegant uh, event. Uh, the food is always of the highest quality, and uh, we have entertainment. And we also added a component a few years ago called the Hall of Champions, mm -hmm. where we recognize outstanding community leaders and um, distinguished alumni. And uh, that started out, and then COVID hit. We had we didn't do it one year, but we did it virtually last year, and now we're back on it. So this is going to be the full program, but we decided to make it more casual. The theme is an um, an evening in paradise. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be island casual, it's, and we're going to have a Polynesian review. It's going to be a live review with flaming swords. Awesome. We're going to have hula dances. Everyone's going to get a lay, and uh, we're going to have uh, music, uh, mm -hmm. Polynesian music. Uh, there's uh, a professional group coming in with steel drums and music. And, of course, we have, I call it a nearly open bar, okay? <laughs> Everyone gets uh, two tickets for premium drinks, but I hold the ticket, I hold extra tickets, okay? And as long as you're not driving, you can get extra tickets from me. But it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, that's on Saturday, November the 5th at Harbor Ridge Yacht and Country Club. You can go on our website at efslc.org, and you can buy tickets. And you can also do sponsorships. But let's talk about how the Cultural Alliance blended in with this. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about this great program, bringing art into our schools. And uh, I was looking for uh, a couple of venues. Like It just started out with a conversation about the centerpieces. So tell the audience about the centerpieces. We are so excited about that. So our kids from CAST, Creative Arts Academy of St. Lucie County, and uh, Somerset okay. uh, Charter School, yeah. both creating centerpieces out of recycled materials that are absolutely stunning. I send you some pictures of examples. I think it's going to be a great surprise for all of the patrons who come to us, enjoy this awesome event to see really unusual centerpieces that are made out of recycled materials by kids. Right, by children, by the right. students. It's really great. So that's a that's a great a, a great part of that. And then we started talking about what is the the uh, dinner going to look like. And we actually went over to Harbor Ridge and we walked the grounds. And Beautiful all. venue. And, oh, it really is. It's a, it's a magnificent facility. And, and, and the service is top notch and the food is excellent. And so we, as we started walking, I said, hey, maybe there's a way we can bring the art into the, into the actual event. Yep. So what we've done is we've dedicated a portion of the, of the, um, of the space for, for artists to come mm -hmm. in. So let's talk about that. Tell, tell, tell the audience how the artists will fit in with the overall program. Well, I wanted to connect all the dots. So the, the artists that are going to be there are the same artists that taught the professional development classes. So then all of the audience members and guests can really get to know the artists, they got to know the school teachers. And then um, they also, and the other teachers are going to be the ones who are going to be going into schools and teaching the kids. So 
again, guests can really see the quality of the work that the artists are presenting and producing and what kind of talent is going to go into the schools to work with the kids. Okay, so we'll have, what, about five artists, maybe? Mm -hmm. About yep. five artists, about and five they'll percent. have a section for displays. Yep. And, uh, they're each donating a piece. Okay, they're each donating a piece and for, then 20, for the auction. Exactly, and then 20% of all of their, uh, whatever they sell at the event will go back to the foundation as well. So that's that's terrific. So, we're, so the, the patrons will have an opportunity to purchase items. They'll have an opportunity to bid on items. Mm -hmm. And also, I just want to mention to the audience, we're going to be back on with a live auction, okay? So I'm thinking these are live auction items, awesome. okay? So we'll do a live auction, and we're going to have some jewelry. We're going to have some travel uh, travel opportunities, uh, as well as art. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so th that'll be the live auction. I wanted to mention that the silent auction, which has been a component of the dinner for many years, during COVID, we transitioned to an online auction, very similar to eBay. The company's called ClickBid, and it was amazing. Okay, now we have a larger audience, mm -hmm. and we made a lot of money on the uh, um, on, on, on the silent auction. So this year, although the dinner is live, the silent auction will be virtual. So everyone will come in, we'll have a, a QR code, they'll, they'll be able to load up their, their smartphone, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to take a look at the items that are, that, are, that are available and start bidding right away. And also, even the live auction, they'll be able to pay and settle through the uh, smartphone. Excellent. So there's no more lines anymore. There's mm -hmm. no more, you know, waiting to pay to pay to uh, pay for the item. Uh, Michelle Miller, clerk of the court, is our master of ceremony. Oh, she's be, wonderful. Yeah, she really <laughs> is. Yeah, she, she's a terrific uh, uh, volunteer for us. She's a former board member, and she, and every time I call her up, she says, "Sure, Tom." So she's back. She'll also be the auctioneer. Excellent. Okay. So yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. So please, if you uh, are looking for a an um, evening out, an elegant evening. Uh, go on our website at efslc.org and uh, buy a ticket. I'm not going to apologize for the price, but the reality is is that the the, the cost is going way up, and uh, that's just due to uh, uh, what is happening today. And uh, we had a decision to make whether we would downscale the 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 venue and mm -hmm. downscale the food. But our mantra has always been an elegant evening for education, so we kept it with the high level food and the high level. Uh, um, event and so the tickets are $150 per single and $300 per per, per couple, yeah. and uh, but there's value in that because you're going to see not only uh, um, get to learn about the programming from the Education Foundation standpoint, but now we've got the Cultural Alliance and artists there. So there's a real um, collaboration be, uh, be, uh, between between the two. My feeling is this is a peek into the future, okay? So the foundation has always wanted to partner with other organizations, but this is very meaningful because it blends in with both of our core missions. And it's all about really innovating uh, the uh, academics. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you uh, so much. I got a feeling that this is just the very beginning of a terrific relationship over many, many years. I agree. Thank you very much. Thank I just want to talk down. a little bit about you know what else is happening with the Education Foundation, and one of the things that we have done is that you know with our focus on academics, uh, we've had a, a couple of programs that, that we started, and with great with um, great success. And I wanted to mention a program. I'm not sure if you've even heard about it. It's called Play with Purpose, mm -hmm. and this is a program that uh, the, the foundation uh, knew about. And we approached the school district, and they really wanted it. And we actually funded the proof of concept, and now it's everywhere. So Play With Purpose brings back a concept called a structured play. And I don't know if you know, but uh, uh, a few years ago, all of the toys in kindergarten had basically been taken out. There wasn't funding for it, and there was really a focus on testing. And, of course, structured play is a time-honored concept, certainly in the United States, and it came from Europe back in the 1840s. In fact, the name kindergarten is a German name, kinder meaning children, of course, and garden not meaning a vegetable or a flower garden, but a playground. Mm -hmm. And then it became internalized, so children would play with play sets. So kindergarten was all about structured play, and of course, structured play helps with socialization, micro-coordination of the hands, but it's a precursor to reading, actually. And then we found out that if a student doesn't read proficiently by the third grade, they're just not going to graduate. And then we found out that if a child as early as or as late as uh, five and six years old doesn't really use their brain capacity completely, mm -hmm. they're not challenged enough, the brain begins to delete a lot of those neurons and they never get them back. So the whole idea of education, early education, we talked about preschool just, just recently, but preschool, pre-K, okay, 
and kindergarten are very, very important to really exercise the human brain and to use that, that brain as much as possible. Structured play is a key, key part of that. The school district knew that and they wanted the program back. So a few years ago, we actually created a model of this program. Jackie Wolf, our program manager, spent the summer developing this program. And really what it is is that each school gets 13 kits, and a kit is a big bin. And inside each bin are four identical sets of a themed play. And it might be, let's go to the zoo, let's visit the doctor, let's play restaurant owner, let's, you know, let's play um, a, a pizza shop, mm -hmm. okay? Let's help at home, let's go camping. And we have all these themes. It might even be, let's build a house. Anything that requires teamwork. And, uh, and, and each of the, of the classrooms, okay, four times a, a week, for about an hour, opens up the bin, they break up into four identical groups, they all share roles, okay, and then, the, then there's also a book with, with each kit, and the book is read by the teacher, so it brings back that, that early learning aspect. And I can tell you in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the model that we did, and the early testing, the uh, I-ready testing scores really started to increase. So school district really liked this program, mm -hmm. found the funding for it, so now this year it's being implemented in all the kindergarten classes by the school district. That's amazing. So this is an example of the foundation really focusing on innovation of learning and trying to unlock the potential of every child working hand in glove with the school district to, re to recreate a time-honored program. Really thrilled about it. And, th and then we didn't stop there. Uh, the foundation learned that there, were, that there are 6,000 special needs students in the school district. And the school district has, has had, for a number of years, sensory rooms. And sensory rooms are special places where a student can go if they're, maybe they're overloaded with sensory uh, in, the, in the academic environment, where they can go under supervision okay and be able to calm down and so what we did was we retrofitted a couple of these as a test again to see if we could uh, um, you know uh, freshen up the uh, sensory rooms and we did that with great success and now we're working with the school district and we have grant funding so we could we will be able to uh, uh, retrofit many many more sensory rooms this year and the sensory room uh, retrofitting includes uh, filtering the lighting mm -hmm. we create sensory stations along the way one might be a TP where a student can go in, maybe put some earphones in, some music, and calm down under supervision. And we have uh, um, experts there you know, helping the students. We have a foam pool they can dive into. There's bean bags and yoga balls that they can they can go into, that they can have corners into, or just a quiet corner where they can read. And then they're under supervision, and then they can go back into the classroom without number one. You know, number one, it helps the student, but then the, but the classroom can continue on without disruption. So it's a really great program. So that's another example of what the foundation has been doing. And all this comes from our sponsors, okay? Um, Mike Wetzel and Joanne Tierney uh, created a foundation, and they're longtime residents of uh, Fort Pierce, and they donated funding for the uh, sensory rooms, and we were able to match it. I just wanted to mention that all of our programs have an opportunity, the grant programs, to uh, to be matched thanks to the state matching grant program. In fact, the program that you and I worked on, we were able to double the the, the amount of money that you raised privately, okay, and donated to the foundation for the benefit of the school district. We were able to double that money. We act as fiscal agent for your funding. Mm -hmm. So you work with the school district. The school district. Um, um, then authorizes the invoice that, that you create to the foundation, and that funds the actual program. So it's very exciting. And this is done thanks to the, uh, to the uh, legislators, state legislators. So Senate Gail Harrell and state representative um, um, uh, um, um, of our district, Dana uh, Trabalsi, have been very supportive of, of this on a very personal level. Mm -hmm. And so now it's a line item in the budget, and each year, the Education Foundation of St. Lucie County gets an allocation of the state money, and then we reach out to the private sector, we match that, and that supercharges the, mm -hmm. the funding of the, of the program. So the year is off to a very busy start, a great start. I found a new partner. I'm just thrilled. So thank you very much, Ali Thank you. It was you great meeting so you. Thank you so much, Tom. I just wanted to end this uh, uh, a program with, with, a, a, uh, um, with another note. As soon as the dinner is over, we take a brief, brief rest, and then we're back on it again. Ali and I are just talking in the, in the elevator how the nonprofit world is just non nonstop. But uh, starting in, uh, in December, uh, we open up the portal to our scholarship program. 
in a future program. We're going to talk about a very exciting new scholarship program that we're, that, that, that we're working with, with the uh, Prepaid College Foundation. It, it's a game changer, okay? It's a game changer. It's a three-to-one match uh, program. Wow. You know, you donate about $1,000, and you, uh, you'll be able to give a student a $3,000 scholarship. So that's a game changer. We'll talk about more about that. And then we also move into the Night of the Stars, and that's a magnificent celebration. It's run by the school district, sponsored by the foundation, and private benefactors to celebrate excellence within our staff. And that culminates in the Teacher of the Year, Distinguished Minority Educator of the Year, School Related Employee of the Year, Principal of the Year, Assistant Principal of the Year, and First Year Teacher of the Year. And we have a number of great benefactors. In fact, they're already lined up. I, I didn't even have to call them. They're all ready to go, and they actually donate money that we can give cash awards to these winners. But we're back on with the, uh, with the, with the Night of the Stars in person. It's a gala. Uh, it's, it's on the order of the Academy Awards. It's back at Lincoln Park Academy, one of our more favorite high schools. And uh, so, so you, you'll all hear uh, more about that. So, uh, Leona, thank you for coming as our guest, and thank yeah. you all very much.